The European destroyer line is one of my favourite lines in the whole game. This is brilliant. <laughs> but I like this. Combining a whole host of great characteristics with some less desirable ones to bring one of the most active play styles of any destroyer tree in the game. Now, I'm going to try something slightly new today. No, don't do it! We're going to go through the entire tech tree in this one video. Ooh, you're hard. I know, I know, but don't worry, it's not going to take that long, just like you in bed. We're going to take a quick 20 to 30 second look at each ship in the tree, finishing with a more detailed look at the tier 10. Since these ships are mostly from the land of Ikea and Abba, I will most likely be butchering these pronunciations, so if you're Swedish, I'm just so sorry in advance. ORP Grief was built for the Polish Navy to serve as a training ship, and she's the tier one in this line. Wow, that was a that was a voice crack. You suck! And she's the tier one in this tree, so I'm not gonna give her any more attention other than to say she has the best AA of her tier, which is now my new favorite useless fact if she can never ever see a carrier. Patla was apparently one of the most advanced destroyers of the Austro-Hungarian Navy. I can't say that translates particularly well into World of Warships, being only at tier 2, but she does set a template for the general playstyle of the rest of the line. Unlike most other destroyers in the game, she does not possess a smokescreen. And neither do any of the other ships in this line. Romulus, apart from having one of the coolest names in the game, is our first introduction to a Swedish ship in this tech tree, which is a nation we'll be staying with for the rest of the line. She is a direct improver from Tatla, possessing one more main gun and two more torpedo tubes. Most of the main characteristics of this entire line are cemented here. High speed, fast reloading torpedoes that do a low amount of damage per hit on a ship that has great manoeuvrability but lacks in top speed. She also has a lower than average health pool for her tier and armor about as existent as Prince Andrew's chances of being innocent. Class Horn is much of the same, possessing the same number of torpedo tubes, but her torpedoes reload 15 seconds slower, do 2000 more damage per torpedo and travel five knots faster. So they are a noticeable upgrade, especially as this is the first tier that you can face fast battleships such as Congo. Visby is where this line gains its party trick, a heal. She possesses a repair party consumable, allowing her to regain up to 10% of her health with every use. And she will need this as her health pool is the lowest of any tier five destroyer. Interestingly, she also possesses the fastest base speed out of the entire line at 39 knots. Much like Game of Thrones Season 4, speed is all downhill from here. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Bashtaras is pretty much just a direct upgrade from Visby. This is the tier where it's worth noting how pitifully low the damage output of her torpedoes is. At only 7,500 damage per torpedo, it's pretty much impossible to dev strike a same tier battleship or higher. This is another trait that is constant throughout the entire line. Quick, low damage, fast reloading torpedoes. Scania is the first destroyer in the line constructed to a modern design, as opposed to the pre-war designs of Vashtaras and before. She loses the main battery turret when compared to Vashtaras, but her remaining guns fire at a much faster rate, almost doubling in DPM. That's a lot of damage! Although her concealment is still painfully average at 6.2 kilometers fully upgraded, she can be deadly at finishing off destroyers and even low health cruisers with her guns. Her torpedoes now reach out to 12 kilometers and travel at 80 knots when upgraded. However, she still only has access to two triple launchers. Three or four times, maybe. I don't pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. Holland is pretty underwhelming. The only difference of any significance between her and the Scania is that her anti-aircraft firepower is significantly improved. Previous ships in the tree already had very good anti-aircraft suites for their tier, but the Holland is the first ship to gain access to the defensive fire consumable. Oh my god! Wow! Outside of the anti-aircraft defenses, Holland's main upgrade over the Scania is that her torpedoes now do 10,000 damage each. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. And her DPM increases by about 40,000. This means that if you are too confident with the ship's improved gun power, you could find yourself sinking to the bottom faster than Kislein Maxwell. What did he say? <laughs> Osterjotland is a nice upgrade over Holland. The most significant change is the increase in torpedo tube count from three per launcher to four. <laughs> coupled with an increase in speed to 86 knots base with her upgraded torpedoes. One significant improvement to her survivability though is that she now heals up to 14% of her health per repair party charge, which gives her slightly more staying power. And finally, we reach the pinnacle of the line, the Haaland, potentially the most powerful torpedo destroyer in the game that isn't an overpowered American premium that you can't buy anymore. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Her torpedoes retain the same low damage as the rest of the line, but they are tied for the fastest torpedoes in the game alongside the F3 torpedoes and the Shibakaze. Harland receives an extra torpedo tube per launcher, having a total of 10 torpedo tubes over two launchers of five tubes each. 
All of these factors means that Havant is able to rapidly fire spreads of fast moving, long range, accurate torpedoes. And whilst these torpedoes do not do much damage individually, the attributes of these torpedoes means it is relatively easy to stack hits. She retains the 14% maximum heal of the Osteotland, and her anti-aircraft suite is the best of any destroyer on the game, which provides her a level of flexibility in matches featuring CVs, as she does not have to fear a carrier as much as other destroyers, who may have to waste a smokescreen to not be targeted. I fear no man. But that thing, it scares me. Her detection is a respectable 6 kilometers fully upgraded too, allowing her to perform traditional destroyer roles such as capping and spotting without too much difficulty. She outputs 210,000 DPM, which on paper gives her the 8th highest DPM of any tier 10 destroyer. She also has greatly improved turret handling characteristics over earlier ships in the line, giving her vastly improved flexibility in the close range knife fight, a situation that her high speed torpedoes also excel in. It's not all Sunshine and Napoli's however, her speed is the second lowest of any tier 10 destroyer, meaning she is unable to easily disengage from pretty much every destroyer, cruiser and even some battleships at her tier. The lack of a smokescreen doesn't help with this either. She still possesses the low health pool that the rest of the line has. Haddon possesses one weird quirk as well. She is not able to fire her main battery gun straight forward at closer ranges due to the placement of her depth charge launchers, meaning you have to ensure you're always slightly to the left or the right of your target. Holland is a brilliant ship but she does underpin the characteristics of the rest of the line. She's got a low skill floor. If you want to play her just by sitting back and playing as a pure torpedo boat, you can, and you will be reasonably effective in this role. However, to play the line as a whole, but also more specifically Harland at a higher level, you have to be comfortable with playing at closer ranges without the safety blanket of the smokescreen. Using these ships' great manoeuvrability and excellent anti-aircraft defences, in combination with their good guns and repair party, to harass and contest enemy destroyers in and around capture points, whilst using her torpedoes to strike larger enemy targets. If you're able to master the strengths of these ships, they are among the most capable destroyers in the game. They can be a really strong asset to whatever team they're on, whilst being as annoying as James Corden to anyone trying to face off against them. <laughs> Here's how you equip your no-fly zone. You can also use this as a guide for the other ships in the tree for the module slots that they have available. In slot 1, go for main armaments modification 1. You want to be doing everything you can to ensure your torpedo tubes and main battery don't get destroyed. In slot 2, engine room protection is the way to go. In slot 3, torpedo tubes modification will boost her torpedoes considerably. In slot 4, propulsion mod is the way to go. Her rudder shift is already more than fast enough. In slot 5, I really hope I don't have to tell you. And in slot 6, torpedo mod 2 will make her fish even more deadly. For a captain build, choose something like this. This build gives you an extra heal, allowing you more freedom to engage in gunfights than a more traditional torpedo boat build. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe so I can pay my legal team for some of the jokes that I made in this video. Just a quick mention as well, if you guys are looking for a World of Warships clan to join on the EU server, come check out my clan in the description below. Um, we chill out most nights in divisions, we play games, we talk shit, we play clan battles, we have a good time. So um, yeah, come check us out, come say hi, and I look forward to playing with you. Now go out there and turn your enemies into flat packs.